All right, Shalom, I'm Akim. It's a high spirit win, Judah, of the Jim Mass, Mississippi camp. Giving all honor and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Rakai, Kodash. I also want to give double honor to our elder apostles and elder bishops, a great minister on Ruel, and peace and blessings to the house of David the elect. And what I want to go into today is a topic entitled, you know, Leaning on the Promise. All right? Because, you know, we're going to come a point in time if for brothers in their individual lives, they haven't coming to that point already is that the only thing you're really going to have the hope for is the promise. And I mean that literally, you know, you know, the most high has this thing set up to where really the only thing that you have for your hope. All right. Is the promise. All right. So let me um get this in Hebrews 10 and 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. And what is that great recompense of reward? preeminent position in the kingdom of heaven and mortality as well. All right, verse 36, it says, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of your howl, you might receive the promise. And something that's very important to take note of is that it says in verse 36, after you have done the will of your howl. So we're alive today and we're, we came back in this car nation, right? We're not locked up in prison. We didn't die. Right, because the Most High has called us to do His will. And our only job is solely to do His will, right? And the, and the, the payoff for doing His will is to, you know, trans, transition into our immortal bodies and receive the promise, uh, which is the land of Israel and ultimately the planet Earth, the world, man, and rulership, right? So let me get that again. Hebrews 10 and 36, for you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of your Yahweh, you might receive the promise. And the only thing we have to really lean on is the promise, right? Nothing else really matters. Nothing else is really guaranteed except for the promise if we continue to do his will, man. Okay? So let me go back because I just looked up a couple of scriptures that contain um, the word promise, man. All right? Let me see. Let me get Hebrews. All right. Hebrews 11 and 17. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, which was a foreshadowing of the Most High offering up his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, all right, for the salvation of Israel. All right. But the things that we go through in our everyday lives, all right, we have to be fueled. We have to be fueled, all right, by the, by the promises, all right, or the promise of Yahweh Bashmah Bashah. We have to be fueled by the promise that our Heavenly Father made with our forefathers, man, because we're right at the at the gate, man. All right. We're at the end of that that race, man. And, and if we if we endure this thing, all right, we're going to receive the promise. All right. The, the promise of immortality, the promise of everlasting rulership, man. All right. We are going to receive that promise, man. All right. Let me get some things pertaining to that. All right. The scripture that just pops in mind. Right, Revelation 2 and 26. It says, And he that overcome it and keep it my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. All right. But overcome what, man? Overcome demons in your mind. Overcome your daily affliction. Overcome the hour of temptation. And part of that promise is you have in a preeminent position, all right, which means that you're going to rule over these other nations, man. Verse 27, it says, And he shall rule them with the rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Okay? So, a hey, part of that, man, hey, we're going to rule nations with the rod of iron, man. Okay? Hey, we're going to rule... Nations, all right, with the rod of iron, all right? And that's part of that promise, man. Well, this promise is made way back, all right, to Abraham, all right, to Isaac and Jacob, how we're going to have the land of Israel, the land of milk and honey, and we're ultimately going to have rulership. As a matter of fact, let me get Genesis, all right? Let me see, 27 and 39. I mean, no, that's 37. All right, 27, 39, going into, you know, Jacob deceived 
his father into thinking he was Esau. And it says, uh, let me see, let me see, let me get Isaac's, uh, um, Isaac's blessing. I mean, Jacob's blessing. All right. All right. Let me, let me get to the point. All right. Genesis 27. And. Genesis 27 and 26, it says, And his father Isaac said unto him, talking about Jacob, Come there now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And this is Jacob pretending to be Esau. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is at the smell of a field which Yahweh have blessed. Therefore, Yahweh give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. That means we're going to have the whole world, man. You're going to have the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth, and all the earth's resources, which is why the scripture says what? Hey, those our gates should be openly, continually. All right, we're going to spoil the nations, man, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee. All right, that's part of the promise that we're going to be on top. So the hell that we catch in our daily lives is worth the promise, man. It's worth the wait. All right? And it, uh, let me, uh, Genesis 27 and 29. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. But the point, of, the point was, is that, look, nations are going to serve us. They're going to bow down to us, all right? And we're going to have the fatness of the earth, man. All right? The best land, the best resources that comes from the land. All right? We can't fathom that, man. All right? You got billionaires that have half a billion dollar jet, private jets. And within those jets, it's like a little mini palace within the jet, man. And we're going to topple that, man. We're going to, we're going to trump that, man. All right? Not only are we going to one-up them, we're going to two-up them, three-up them. All right? But these are promises made back in the beginning, man. And which really, really the blessing that Esau gave to Jacob, I mean, the blessing, blessing that Isaac gave to Jacob was really just a manifestation of the promises made to Abraham, man. It was just a more in-depth uh, uh, review of the promises that we're going to receive in the near future, man. Now we're at that part in, our, uh, in, the, in this path, man, within these times, man. Where's the time to rule, man? But it's worth the wait, man. But the most high has it set up to where, you know, if you are the hopeful elect, then nothing is really promised. The only thing you really have is the promise, man. Is that, look, we're about to receive rulership. We're about to rule the world under Yahweh Shai and King David in righteousness, man. Righteousness is going to be forced on the planet Earth, man. All right? And we're going to enforce that our willingness, us, man. But that's part of the promise. Immortality, that's part of the promise. The nations bowing down to us. You see how that linked in with uh, Genesis 2 and 26? He that overcometh shall... Let me get that right quick. Real good, quick, quick again. Genesis 2 and 26. And he that overcometh to keep my works until the end. To him will I give power over the nations. He shall rule them with the rod of iron. But they did not just say in Genesis. All right? They did not just say in Genesis um, 27. I think it's 29. Verse 29. Where it says... Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. So that was already the promise anyway, all right? But the hopeful elect, they're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shah's promise, because that that's a joint heir of Yahweh Shah's rulership, man, all right? So that already tied in, all right? These are promises made, and what it is, it's just, it's just more light being shed on the details of the promise. Nations are going to bow down. You're going to rule over nations, all right? You're going to suck the milk of the Gentiles in another scripture, all right? That's the promise, promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now we're about to receive that promise, Abba willing, man, if we endure. But we all have to go through chastising, all right, to get to receive that promise, man. That's why I said, if you suffer with me, you shall reign with me. But now we have to endure suffering, man. There's a reality to that, man, all right? You might lose a job, or your money might be up and down. The most high might have a cap on how much you make. You know, the, the family afflictions, all right? The demons in your head is all set up 
right, for us to endure so we can have a prize waiting on us, man. But you don't receive a prize unless you competed for that prize. How can you receive a prize if you never competed? Or how can you receive a, a prize if you didn't complete the competition, man? First, we have to complete these trials, man. Hey, but with that, man, hey, I just I want to give all any glory to you. How about some outside? My son, Chaku Das, double honors to the apostles. The other apostles and great millstone rule well. Peace and blessed as they have the elect. Ababa, come out, Shalom.